What's happened? What is this place? Maybe... Maybe I'm dead. I can't see any light. Maybe I am dead. I can't get up. What's going on? What's happening to me? What's going on? There's, There's no one here. But... These noises... No here. But... These God, noises. my head is killing me. God, I can't keep my eyes open. Can't keep my eyes open. I 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 can't keep my eyes open.
this place time this place memory time this place memory
The only thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my thing doll. I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. Thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. Thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. Thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. Thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. Thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. Thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. The only my doll. Thing I remember clearly is Charlotte. Nobody says we can't. Let's find Charlotte. Nobody says we can't. Let's find Charlotte. Nobody says we can't. Let's find Charlotte. Let's search the wards on the upper floor. There's a plan on the wall which Let's shows their the location. The upper floor. There's a plan on the wall which Let's shows their location. The upper floor. There's a plan on the wall which Let's shows their location. The upper floor. There's a plan on the wall which shows their location. The There's a plan on the wall which shows their location. Mummy took good care of Charlotte. She tucked her in, Mummy hugged her, good care gave her Charlotte. cuddles and kisses. She tucked her in, Mummy hugged her, good care gave her She was very and affectionate and loving. She was very affectionate. Nothing and bad loving. happened to Charlotte, and that surprised me. I didn't understand. At first, I was quite scared. I was afraid that she wanted to hurt me. I lived in constant fear that mom would abandon her. 
Because I didn't deserve to live. I didn't deserve to be loved. It's cold and it's dark. Look, she's cold. She'll get ill. We can take care of her. Nobody can stop us. Charlotte is a good girl. I saw a wheelchair on the ground floor. It's comfortable there, and we can put Charlotte somewhere warm. This isn't a good place for Charlotte. She'll be cold here. Charlotte will be comfy here. But it's cold. No, no, it's cold. Don't shiver, Charlotte. The cold will go away. It'll go away.
We must find some warm lights. Let's go to the surgical ward. The cold has gone away now, you see? The light, the warmth. We can do it. The cold will go away. It has to. Now we can enter the ward where everything started. It all began in the observation ward on the ground floor.
It was a limitless immensity, a blinding, merciless light. I was 16 years old, and I was afraid, always afraid, a fear that wore me down. I needed help, but I couldn't speak. I was terrified of everything, even thinking. They said they were taking me to a place where the fear would go away, where I would get better. I stopped living in there. They dragged me away and stripped off all my clothes, everything. I tried to explain what was going on in my head. They tied me to the bed for days. I was alone with my nightmares. It wasn't fear anymore. It was madness. And when you're mad, you cease to exist. She was my only hope in this hell. I was descending down, down among the damned. But that woman and her smile kept me alive. Mummy took good care of Charlotte. She tucked her in, hugged her, gave her... The door is locked from the outside. Here the doors can only be locked and unlocked from the outside.
He laughed, panted, and slobbered all over me. It hurt me when he touched me. I thought I'd suddenly split open with a loud crack, and I would be shattered into pieces. I felt fragile, sick, dirty, degraded. All I could do was clutch Charlotte tightly while he... Rene obeyed. He was the master in the realm of light. I was being consumed by the evil act I had committed. I threw up and could feel hell getting closer and closer. Those tests the doctors did to me. They said there was something growing inside and they wanted to drag it out of me.
she stayed with Renee during those terrible medical examinations, and that gave her the strength to survive. August 21st, 1938. Confidential. Dear A, I know what you think about these things, so I'm referring a patient to you, Renee T. This wretched girl got out of control and caused trouble in the grounds. She's almost three months pregnant. The nurses should be more alert. I'm examining the girl on the 28th. I'll handle things very carefully, don't worry. We don't want to make matters worse. Then they said that Renee was crazy, and that the illness was all in her head. Careful, little girl, careful. I was scared, and I didn't talk to anyone about the illness. Only her. Not even the other doctor. He never touched Renee. He just wrote things down. You can tell me everything. Don't be afraid, he said. Everything's going to be fine. Do you want to know what I am writing? I note down what I observe in you, everything I see. He didn't hate Renee. He tried to help her, but he rarely examined her in those small surgeries.
June 1935. After much theorizing and practice in clinics for the privileged, the moment for action has finally arrived. Volterra is the right place. It's an avant-garde hospital, the perfect place for a doctor who really wants to make a difference. November 20th. Crossing the threshold of the asylum was similar to entering another dimension. A world of smells, noises, and images, which it is almost impossible to imagine, describe, or explain. August 1936. The situation is similar to that in many other institutions. The department is overcrowded. Hundreds of patients are supervised by a handful of nurses who are forced to tie the more distressed ones to their beds or to radiators. They do 24-hour shifts. It's impossible to work like this. We doctors rarely see the female patients, and it's the nurses who tell us what's happening to the women. The overpowering stench in the wards, the constant din of shouts and voices that are barely recognizable as human, dirty, naked bodies devoid of any dignity. The lunatic asylum gets under your skin and wears you down. I often consider resigning. I feel useless, impotent, a sort of merciful jailer, a mercy that helps no one and only helps to ease my conscience. March 15th, 1938. Dramas are played out before my eyes every single day, and I try to distance myself from them, and just do the best I can. But a girl arrived some days ago. I couldn't avoid her gaze. All she asked in her dignified silence was not to be ripped away from her world. And me. I'm old enough to be her father, the father she never had who didn't want her, who rejected her without even knowing her. I, too, refused what she asked me. March 12, 1938. Renee T., 16 years old. Menstruation at age 12. Housewife. Father unknown. Mother a seamstress. Admitted an observation yesterday morning from Pontedera, accompanied by a police officer authorized by the examining magistrate of the Court of Pisa, to be admitted for a psychiatric evaluation which I have carried out. Medical certificate. Mental illness preceded by warning signs. Has suffered from depression for a year believing she had tuberculosis food deprivation. We can't read this document. It is forbidden. We mustn't. If they find out, there will be trouble. Have you ever wondered who you are? Yes, of course you've wondered. I never had children, I don't think. Let's read it. I must understand. I must remember. She is frightened, hears noises and ghosts, presents serious signs of anxiety, psychosis, suffers from hallucinations. She is anxious, confused, her expression is distressed, a questioning look as if terrified, disoriented. She feels confused, hears voices shouting in her head. She doesn't understand things properly. She has been feeling unwell for two or three months. 
When questioned, she replies, My mother wants to hurt me. I am always scared of her. She chases me. Why are you here? I argued with my mother and was so upset that I felt like my head was spinning. There was a woman there who wanted to force me into a life of prostitution. They wanted to condemn me to be burned at the stake. Children whispered, called my name. March 16th. She couldn't sleep last night. They wanted to condemn her to be burned at the stake. April 4th. Transferred to the calm ward, still under my supervision. Yes, that's true. The ward where Amara was. Yes, the stake. The children wanted to burn Renee. She had to pay for what she'd done, like witches at the stake. I didn't know what reality was. I never did. I've known many different realities, maybe too many. When you move, everything changes its appearance and meaning. I have no points of reference. We'll just have to keep looking. April 21st. She's more awake this morning and is responding to questions, complains of headaches. She became agitated when she found out her mother was there. She says that one day, many years earlier, she was with a friend of hers and met a man who made her get into a car and took her for a ride. He made her smoke cigarettes and drink liquor, and the man showed her certain things. He tried to hurt her and made her go crazy. She says he promised to marry her and made her swear to keep what had happened a secret. These facts were essentially confirmed by her mother. After that, she became arrogant, impatient, and hostile towards her family, especially her mother. She started taking off her clothes in public. Her moods would swing from laughter to tears. She rants. She pleasures herself. It's not true. Renee hostile? I... It's all made up. They wanted to make her into something she wasn't. And then certain things would have been forgotten. Renee was the bad girl. Maybe I'm starting to understand. That's enough of reading these lies. Let's look for Amara. Amara. 